welcome to Change Now, the world's largest summit. My name is Inge Mehus, and I'll be your moderator here in our pitch garden. Thanks for joining us today for our second business reverse pitch for Change Now. We're going to now spend the next 30 minutes with five executives from Viola from around the world. Each one of them is going to share a business issue they are facing in their own geographic location and the problem that they need to be solved in order to accelerate the ecological transformation and they will have two minutes. Then we're going to have a jury which consists of different representatives from startups and solution oriented organization and they will ask these five executives from Viola questions to understand the issue and maybe even to challenge them a bit. But first, I'm going to ask Claire Frosone to pitch Open Innovation by Veolia, your new startup program that you just announced. Claire, over to you. Hello, Ingi. Hello, everyone. I'm very happy to be with you today and to launch our new startup program called Open Playground. What is Open Playground? Uh, we have asked several operational people from Veolia to tell us what were their unanswered questions, where they had challenged, they needed help to find solutions. And I would like first to thank them for uh, sharing their questions with us and to present them today. The idea of this open playground is really to present you the questions, to gather your ideas, and we have a platform on our website, veolia.com, so please go there and fill the form and subscribe. We'll be happy to have as many subscriptions as possible. And so we are going to take a few months to select partners with uh, whom we are going to develop a pilot or develop a solution together. And after another six months, uh, we will see if the solution works, how to scale it uh, world worldwide. Uh, maybe a few words, Veolia is a global company. We're present in 45 countries. We have 100 uh, 8,000 collaborators, uh, and we operate in 45 countries in waste, water, energy. So we are a global company, and we are very happy to share our questions today and to find solutions that we will scale globally. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Claire. All right, then I'm going to go to Phil Abraham. I understand that you have a question about supply chain. Can you tell us a little bit more about that, Phil? Thank you, Ingi. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, what I'm going to present is actually a wonderful. Oh, I think it's frozen. It is great significance for us. That's about plastic recycling and about the food industry. So when you bring these two together, you know, in the food industry, traceability of its supply chains are extremely important because you need to know where your contamination sources could get in and where your liability issues have to be managed. And when we, through the plastic recycling, touch base with this food industry, it's equally important for us to have this traceability possible. But the challenge is that when we deal with recycled plastic, you're dealing with a lot of um, supply chains and most of them informal. So the question is, how are we going to track and trace the contamination and link it back to these suppliers so that we can actually correct the issues that we have and ensure a, a, a quality to our clients uh, who in the end uh, deal with the food and uh, beverage industry. So the traceability of the plastic stream of going upstream to the suppliers and when we talk about products that we could put into the market through our bioconversion program, which is another seed of our innovation, then we are uh, required to also know how our products are traveling in, in that stream. So we have to also be able to track our product, product chains and our supply chains. So the, the challenge we're going to give you guys is to come with technology to help us do the traceability of our product and supply chains. Thank you, Ingi. Thank you so much, Phil. And then we're going to head over to Alice Robin because you are looking for solutions about waste and so on, so goods in fashion, textile, and a luxury industry. Could you tell us a little bit more, Alice? Yes, thanks. Um, so I'm uh, in Veolia West activity for France. And uh, in France, we have a new uh, incentive regulation uh, because uh, with um, a regulation from uh, last uh, year. Uh, any producer or holder of textile waste will have to sort it at the source. 
Furthermore, we have a French regulation and now destruction is prohibited for unsold. So we are wondering what could we do with those uh, waste, with those textile waste. Um, those textile waste are a sublet textile, a sublet clothing, a sublet bags. Uh, they are constituted of several materials and sometimes complex materials. So what could we do tomorrow? Fantastic. Thank you so much, Alice. And then we're going to head over to Sebastian Chauvin because you're looking for solutions about circularity, but at a very small scale. Yes, exactly. And, and good afternoon, uh, good morning, uh, Indy. Uh, indeed, uh, I'm very happy to present uh, a challenge uh, that is what well, we call the, the micro-circular economy, uh, or even driven by autonomous houses, and, and with an ambition to propose to the inhabitants of, uh, of houses uh, solutions that could replace somehow, partially or totally, the public services, or the essential services, whether we talk about wastewater, potable water, reuse, waste, biogas, compost, well, all the solutions that we could imagine to embed directly at, uh, uh, at the uh, inhabitant uh, places. So you will understand that the, the challenge we're talking about is rather technical, even though uh, all the, the, the technology around, uh, uh, around those activities is known today, but it's just a matter of scale, being in capability to have uh, uh, on micro scale uh, all these solutions that could be deployed uh, at the level of individual houses. And in terms of markets, uh, as you can uh, guess, uh, we are really targeting the replacement, if you could say replacement, of what we call the last kilometer of investment, because as you might know, all individual houses, uh, and specifically the ones that are quite isolated from city, require some massive investment to get the essential services connected to their place. So the idea is to have this house uh, embedded with the uh, right solution for them to be autonomous. Thank you. Thank you, Sebastian. Indeed, on a small scale. Then Rob Brown, you are looking for solutions for upcycling waste from agriculture and the food and beverage industry. Can you tell us a little bit more? Yeah, so um, I'm actually a farmer by trade, a strategist by profession. Um, I represent uh, Violi North America, um, and we're sort of looking at the space of ag and food and Bev, especially towards their waste streams. Um, bigger is not always better, um, especially when it comes to waste in North America. We are seeing large volumes of waste that um, will require a different mindset. Uh, ecological transformation will require that mindset of looking at uh, waste is a new resource. So really, I'm, uh, the question I'm posing to everyone, and thank you, Ingi, for uh, hosting, uh, is, you know, are there any ideas out there for upcycling uh, waste streams, uh, creating new loops, uh, adding to existing closed loops, uh, but trying to keep that waste in-house and um, finding some uh, resource basis for it? So that's my question. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. So now the floor is open for the startups to ask their question. So I would like to see who would like to go first. Anybody who has a burning question they would like to ask or try to understand better what they just heard. Um, I can I can go if you want. Please. Um, so I'm Arnaud de la Tour, CEO of Elotmore. Uh, maybe the first question, so for the first topic about the tracking and, and traceability in supply chain, um, I have two questions. One is, um, uh, do you also consider the, maybe the energy efficiency uh, to make sure that the solution you bring uh, to track and analyze data is actually not uh, worse than the, the problem you want to, uh, to fix, uh, than the solution you, you bring in? Or if you look at the Bitcoin issues, for example. And the second question is, uh, uh, did you uh, consider also uh, solutions from other industries like healthcare, for example, with the pandemics? Maybe there is a lot of uh, new technologies to test uh, biological uh, samples uh, in, in, also in rough conditions. So maybe there are solutions that can come from this domain too. Uh, so thank you for the question. Um, uh, let me answer the first, second question first. Um, anything is okay for us, so as long as it works, 
uh, we are not going to be super sensitive into, uh, we don't have an ego to say if it comes from another sector, we can't use it. And that's why we're talking to you guys, because you probably have your eyes and ears open for uh, lots of movements in other sectors as well. So anything, yes, if it can be applied, uh, so much the better, especially if it's tested and proven, why not? So we don't have a problem with um, with uh, copying and adapting uh, solutions for our sector. Uh, now, when it comes to energy efficiency, I think you're leaning towards blockchain. Uh, you know, the issues associated with uh, uh, the high energy requirements of blockchain solutions, uh, but they're always work around. So the short answer is yes, we would certainly uh, make sure that you know our, our carbon or environmental impact is not going to get worse uh, while we do something. However, we also think that there are smart ways of doing, applying technology uh, in a way that uh, it's not uh, demanding on energy as well. So that's the challenge. We're not ruling out anything. Uh, you just need to come up with a smart, smart way of making sure that we're not going to kill a carbon footprint uh, by tracking something where we're trying to reduce a carbon footprint for. Thank you. Does that make sense? Thank you. Wonderful. And I believe Alex has a question. You might have to unmute yourself so we can hear you. Yes. For the last topic about uh, bio waste, uh, do you have, ma uh, have you made a choice between uh, AD or uh, composting bio waste? And uh, which are our um, uh, solutions and uh, explanation to choose one or the other? From a uh, specific waste stream, it really will bespoke depending on the actual waste characteristics. Um, when you're looking at AD, uh, you're looking also at the, the fact of uh, methanization, uh, biogas recovery. Um, from a bio waste, you could be looking at valorization or uh, some other form of function of digestion. Um, it really becomes bespoke to the industry. And when we're looking at food and bev and ag waste, um, we're looking at everything that they are literally total waste management of all the waste coming out of that back end. So you can have a very homogenous waste stream, but the volume is huge and it might not be suitable for one specific activity. We, we're looking for technology to maybe subdivide that waste so then you can actually do those specialized uh, pieces. Does that answer your question? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And we have Basil who would like to ask a question. Yes, thank you. Uh, I hope you can hear me. So I have a question for um, uh, for Philip Abram in the beginning. Um, so I wonder if you have already considered any off-shelf, off-the-shelf solution um, for your problem. And then I have also a question for um, regarding the microcircular economy that you were talking about. So this is the uh, third speaker. I was wondering if you can tell us a little bit more about the um, specific type of problem that you're trying to solve, because there is a lot of different last mile issues regarding you know, wastewater, biogas. Maybe if you can explain us a little bit more the challenge that you're trying to solve with technology. Uh, shall I go first? Um, Bessel? Uh, yes, yes, please. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, um, so uh, off the shelf solutions are best to be honest. Yes, we've been looking out for something. Uh, a bag of coffee and say from which plantation it came from and whether the conditions of the plantation were equitable. So, uh, yes, the technology exists, uh, but we have some challenges and um, I would say interesting challenges that uh, makes it a little more complicated because you're talking about uh, waste plastic. So it's not that easy sometimes to go back to the supplier that gave you the plastic stream where the contamination exists and uh, the other challenge that we have is that uh, we need to be quick in being able to trace that. So one of our clients gives us a couple of hours uh, for us to be able to trace back the supplier that brought the contamination into the plastic uh, stream. So um, Yes, there could be solutions off the shelf, and if they can be applied, yes, why not? Uh, but we haven't found something that we could just, you know, plug and play today. And this is why uh, we're talking to you guys, opening up the challenge uh, to see whether we can use your your smarter brains than what I have 
and come up with uh, a, a cool solution that uh, would work for us. And, uh, and you know, the extension of this is the playground that you get when you talk about plastic, you're not talking only about Asia. Uh, you know, Viola is, a, as Claire was saying, an a, a international company present in 45 odd countries. So uh, the opportunities, the business case behind that is tremendous. So hence the interest. I'll, I'll answer the, uh, the, the the second question. Well, the, the, if you look today, what's available in the market? Because there are a few products available for micro circular uh, economy. Uh, you'd be surprised to see that uh, uh, all the solutions are extremely isolated. First, uh, they are tackling a very tiny portion of the, of the challenges that we that we would like to, to tackle. Probably the the, the, the the solution that everybody knows and, and that is uh, the one that has uh, uh, moved faster than the others is obviously the solar panels, where you could imagine produce your, your own electricity at your own place. That's quite basic on, on, on the concept today, uh, even though years back it was not. But if you look at the, on the other angle, on everything else but the electricity, there is very few today uh, done for the inhabitants and their houses, uh, whenever we talk about their waste today. Uh, the majority of the waste produced by uh, inhabitants is still disposed in front of the house and, and collected by the municipality or, or, or private company like Veolia, for instance. And you can do the same for the for the wastewater treatment, for the potable water as well. Um, and, and hence, the, the, the idea is to kind of uh, uh, being in capability to propose a, a solution uh, answering not properly, uh, totally, because we have to be realistic as well, but partially and, and, and an economic matter uh, to, uh, to inhabitants having individual houses uh, so that they could not get rid of the public services, but make the best of the product they are generating, whether we talk about wastewater uh, or wastewater. Yeah, thank you. Great. Okay. Mafalda has a question. Go ahead, Mafalda. Hi. Uh, so my question is regarding more the textile industry involving the traceability in the fashion brands. So I want to know how to manage the traceability, specifically in our case, digital version of a roll of fabric until the, the ends of the, the value chain, which would not only be a fashion brand. And um, how do you manage in the multi-tier supply chain since there are many um, many companies involved and who should lead this development? Should it be the fashion brands or should it be a third party? Okay, I take it. Um, I don't know. Um, will it be uh, the companies, the brands, or Veolia, or someone else? I, I don't know. It's a good question. But uh, sometimes we are wondering, and we are wondering with, with the brands too, um, who will have the lead and who will do the first step? And uh, we would love to treat about the traceability, it's correct. Um, because uh, unsold are products, and uh, we have a specific regulation about the end of life and uh, product status and waste status. And we will we'll have to look about this specific regulation. And um, furthermore, products can go uh, ahead in Asia, can be producing in France and going in Asia. So uh, we, we need to, to go um, um, to, to, to look with a macro eye of uh, this uh, problem uh, because, uh, because it's not only a French problem, uh, it will be a, a, a world problem. Uh, about uh, those uh, those different uh, flows, so that's right. We, we need to go ahead with a macro uh, high, uh, and and trustability is a real question. You're right. Thank you. All right. Anybody else with a question? Or anything they would like a clarification on? Oh, Arnaud, go ahead. Uh, yes, um, uh, maybe a clarification for the question on uh, microcircularity. So, uh, is it really focused on remote uh, homes or infrastructures? 
or uh, also uh, for cities, uh, because we could imagine that maybe for cities, um, energy management, for example, is, is more efficient at a kind of macro level or, or cheaper. But do you do you also uh, yeah, target uh, cities? No, no you, you're right. The the, uh, the the city is not the key target uh, today. Uh, obviously, cities are getting bigger and bigger with with more people uh, embedded, and then. The, the macro scale is making somehow the uh, the performance of the service that are delivered. So we are more talking about uh, all the uh, houses or inhabitants uh, far from cities. That's what that's what we're talking about. Okay, thank you. Anybody else with a burning question on their mind? Um, I actually would just like to ask some uh, another question regarding the same aspect. So, if there is a solution for traceability, what is what would be considered a value a valuable output from that traceability? What type of information do fashion brands or any value chain in the in the traceability uh, what what do they consider a valuable? Maybe first the materials. Um, what is the product done? Uh, is it uh, laser? Is it uh, cotton? Um, so first, I think it will be the, the the materials in the product and part of each material, and um, may, maybe the, the place uh, it has been produced. I, I I don't know. We will have to imagine it. But uh, material, it is like a, a identity, passport material for products tomorrow and for textile products, men, but maybe for all the products, um, like a passport materials. Yes or not, go ahead. Yeah, okay. Um, last one then. Uh, for the upcycling of agriculture and uh, food and beverage industry, uh, is it only upcycling waste from those industries, or uh, can it be uh, using um, uh, companies in the food and beverage industries to upcycle other waste streams? Uh, for example, I don't know a company uh, brewing beer. Uh, it's kind of um, I mean synthetic biology. It's kind of advanced um, uh, brewery. So uh, you could imagine that they could, um, uh, I don't know, like uh, upcycle CO2 from other industries to produce uh, beverages, uh, for example, or sugar or things like that. So it, do you also consider this aspect or it's really only upcycling waste from those industries? I, I think I'll go back to uh, Philip's um, comment about uh, Veolia and other zones. We're, we're interested in the next seed. So in Veolia, we have a uh, terminology called seed, uh, which we will then grow into trees, which will grow into forests. And everyone that's a member here from Veolia, we're farmers. We're looking for that next seed. So when you're talking about a certain new idea, a new concept that will um, help us, you know, in an ecological transformation way, doing it for the right reasons, it's something that will interest us. So we're not... The question was in within the guardrails of trying to elicit some form of conversation, but our, our discussion is uh, wide and far. So we would look at other uh, avenues and other streams and going back to that idea of creating a new loop of material. Great. And I think we have another question from Basil. Yes. Um, I have a question for Phil. Um, if you could explain us um, what is so regarding traceability, um, what would be the application areas where you think uh, there is, you know, the strongest need right now, the most urgent need for this kind of traceability? And also, um, where um, is it most feasible in terms of the data that is uh, accessible, the type of partnerships that you have? Um, where would be the, the application areas today? Okay, I'll, uh, Bessel, thanks for your question. Let me be a little more specific about uh, a particular challenge we have right now. So uh, uh, you may have heard that Veolia has partnered with Danon to address the uh, plastic, uh, 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 waste plastic situation in Indonesia or, you know, uh, in the world, so to say. Uh, so uh, if you're asking a question specific about what geography in Asia, we would have already business case uh, waiting for us to be used in Indonesia where 
uh, we will use this technology to look back at the PVC contamination in uh, PET, uh, recycled PET. So as you can imagine, uh, the uh, informal uh, collection sector brings these uh, PET bottles in. Sometimes uh, uh, what comes in is not PET, you have PVC contamination. So we're looking for a specific uh, uh, technology, let's say, that will help us track not only uh, or we, we could be uh, we could find the PVC easily, but then to find out from where it came from uh, is the question that we have in mind. Uh, and when you look at the other case for the downstream in terms of products, where we have uh, a bioconversion um, uh, plant in Malaysia, and at some point we're going to start putting out products uh, uh, for pet food, for example. Uh, and then there are liability issues. We have to make sure that, uh, you know, if there's a contamination that happens further downstream from us, we need to prove uh, in a uh, watertight case that the product, when it left us and when it reached where we intended it to go, its packaging was intact and uh, there was no contamination cost because of our processes. And if there was an issue, it came further downstream. So it's useful then for us to handle the liability issues also, when you, as you can imagine, uh, when you give your, your pet uh, food that came from you, we want to make sure that your pet's healthy and you can prove that uh, well, our food does good to your pet. So that's where we're actually coming from to handle both uh, the, the contaminant issue in terms of our liability with our immediate client, but also with the larger community. Uh, we need to make sure that we have something that can um, you know, keep those things um, in check. Is it clear, but Yes, thank you. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you so much. That's all that we can actually get through now. We're going to get a moment of networking soon. But before we do that, I do want to hand the word over to Claire. I would love to hear, what are you thinking about this session so far? Thank you, Ingi, uh, and thank you, everyone. Uh, I think it was a, a really uh, uh, great session because uh, first we had people from all over the world, and it shows you that uh, whether you come from North America, Asia, Middle East, or France, the questions we ask is question that uh, appears uh, all the time all around the world. So th that the, the beauty of uh, digital is that we can share these questions today. And and that's that's really great. And I would like to thank uh, the, the startups who, who accepted to, to, to do this reverse piece and to question us. Uh, you are very often questioned on your business model, on your ideas. And I, I think it was great uh, from you to take the time to, to challenge us. Uh, so thank you uh, all. Uh, this uh, this is a launching of our uh, open plague one. So now go to our website, uh, subscribe, uh, bring your IDs. And if you have other IDs, by the way, do not hesitate, send them to us as well. We'll be more than happy to look at them and to see how together we can really change the world. Beautiful, Claire. Thank you so much, Veolia. Thank you, all the startups. Thank you to all of you tuning in from all around the world for this fantastic session. For you who are here, you can continue the networking by clicking the link in the chat. And other than that, I wish you all a fantastic day and enjoy the Change Now program. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you, Ingrid. Thank you. Bye.